Welcome to a video on graphing partial sums of a series on the TI-84 graphing calculator. This tool can be helpful when trying to visualize the idea of a converging or diverging infinite series. Let's start by considering the harmonic series. So if we have our graphing calculator, the first thing we need to do is put the calculator in sequence mode. So if we press the mode key, and the fourth row we want to highlight SEQ for sequence mode. So we hit the down arrow and then right arrow over to sequence, press enter. Now it's in sequence mode. Now when we press Y equals, that the screen has changed from Y1 to U of N, V of N, and W of N. So, so the minimum value for N will be 1. U of N will be our formula to generate the partial sums. So remember, we'll have to sum a sequence. So if we press second statistics, that'll bring up the list menu. We want to right arrow over to math and select option five for sum. Now we need to select the sequence feature. So we'll press second stat again, right arrow once to ops, and then option five again for sequence. Now we'll type in the formula that generates the terms in the series. So for the harmonic series, it will be one divided by N. And we access the N by pressing this variable key here. Comma, the variable, which is N. Comma, we're gonna start N at one. Comma, and go to N. Now we'll have one closed parenthesis for the sequence and one closed parenthesis for the sum. We'll press enter, and we'll also enter a one here for u of n minimum. Now the graph will be of the partial sums, but before we do that, we do have to adjust the window. And this does take some practice to know how to adjust it based upon the series. I'm gonna leave the n minimum as one, and I'm gonna change the n maximum to 20 so we'll see the graph of the first 20 partial sums. Plot, plot start will be one, plot step will be one. Now for the x-axis, since we're gonna go out to n equals 20, and I wanna see the origin, we'll press negative two to 20. Scale it by ones. Now it may take some practice to know how to adjust the y minimum and y maximum, because it really does depend on the partial sums. I'll change the y minimum to negative one so we can see the origin, and then the y maximum I'll change to four. Let's go ahead and press graph. And each of these points represents the partial sums of the harmonic series. Now remember the harmonic series does diverge, and from the graph alone, this may not be enough information to determine if this diverges and that's why we have so many tests to determine if an infinite series converges or diverges. If we press the trace key and then press the right arrow, the y value will be the partial sums for n equals one, two, three, and so on. So it's also a nice way to look at the values of the partial sums. Now let's go back to y equals and let's change the sequence to the alternating harmonic series. So we'll change this numerator here to negative one to the power of n plus one. So we'll press second, delete for insert, parenthesis, negative one, close parenthesis, exponent, and then in parentheses we'll have n plus one. Let's go ahead and delete this one here. And now this should be the alternating harmonic series, which does converge. Let's go ahead and look at the partial sums of this infinite series. And if we press trace, looking at this graph, it does seem pretty clear that this series does converge to this value here. Let's go ahead and press the trace key and then we can scroll right to see the values of the partial sums. So the graph of the partial sums gives us a nice visual as to whether an infinite series will converge or diverge. 
So I would encourage you to graph some of your infinite series to get a graphical representation as to whether the infinite series converges or diverges. I hope you found this video helpful.